So my name is Chris Corrigan. I'm a facilitator, a host, open space technology guy, and a um, friend of Nancy's. <laughs> so Chris, you have worked with lots of different size groups. And in the context of trying to come up with an idea or create something, what have you noticed about group sizes? Um, I've noticed that smaller groups work well. Um, I think I think the basic principle being that the more edges you have on a group of people, the more diversity you create. The more diversity you create, the more um, resourcefulness you have, and the, the more source you have. Edges. So, more edges. What does that mean? So if you take um, if you take a perfect circle like this. Um, you've got really only one edge, and there's only going to be one way as a facilitator you can interact with all of these with all of these edges with this one edge. If you break that group into several little groups, you're breaking the problem into more edges, so that each of those groups can then come up with a bunch of different solutions. And it, I think it's like a principle from from nature for me um, about how things are able to combine better when we have more ways that we can offer ourselves to each other. So for idea generation and creativity, I'm always breaking groups into smaller um, components. And then for me, I'm also, um, I've been paying attention lately to how odd and even numbers work. So um, not as a rule of, you know, a basic, you know, do it like this all the time and you'll get the same results. But the basic idea is that groups of one are actually really good for coming up with uh, for creativity and I think there's been a lot of studies come out recently that said that a group of one is the best way to innovate, that, that ideas aren't actually born together, that um, innovation comes from single individuals. So if you really want maximum innovation you need to create places in which people can reflect on their own and then bring it back to a larger circle so that we can begin to see what sticks, what patterns come together and start to co-create. Group intelligence, I find, is really good for propagating good ideas, but it's not a very good place, large groups, is not a very good place to generate innovation. So groups of one are really useful for coming up with um, lots and lots of ideas, lots of diversity, and lots of outlying ideas, which can often be the key to innovation. Groups of two, um, in general, even-numbered groups will stabilize work and odd number groups destabilize work. So if you're looking for a lot of creative stuff, I'll often put people in groups of three or five because there's something about um, having you know, people gang up on each other that actually creates the, the, um, uh, creates the energy that uh, leads to creativity. If I'm trying to, for example, work at the end of a planning process and we want to get some action plans sort of like down pat, and just pay attention to like, are we doing it in groups of two, four, six, that kind of thing. Or maybe two people are working together and then they'll go join two other pairs. So you have a group of six. And there's something for me about even numbered group sizes in small groups that leads stability and odd numbered group sizes that bring, um, that bring uh, creativity. That's not a do it like that and you'll always get the same results, but mm -hmm. just what I would invite people to do, practitioners to do, is notice it when you've got those configurations. And then lastly, the thing that I would say, <laughs> we're watching, that was a we're suitcase. watching suitcases a wheelie being rolled suitcase. by. <laughs> so for dealing with chaos. Design that suitcase <laughs> exactly. better, baby. <laughs> so lastly, the last thing I would say is that um, groups of six, yeah. groups of, of more than five have a really hard time getting creative with groups of more than five. Groups of, um, groups of six, you start getting, the introverts start pulling away. So you start losing the benefit of diversity. Um, so, for example, if you're running a, uh, um, I mean, in real in real life, if you're running a conference um, and you have those big conference rounds that seat six or eight people, it's a terrible way to do creative work. You've got to break those conference rounds into two groups of four, or two groups of five, or three, or something. So, for idea generation, you're looking for smaller groups. Um, for stabilizing ideas and moving forward, you want to get groups into larger aggregations, and then for propagating great ideas, bring the whole group back together. So let's then now go to out to the network world. So we're online and we have lots of edges, right? all sorts of edges. Um, do you have any insights about how you figure out what people want or need in that context? Um, well, I think you need to first of all make space for voices. So you, uh, you need to be creating a place in which, um, and not just... <laughs> Um, not just walls where people can stick stuff that'll just, you know, and you get these long lists of ideas, but I think where we can be in one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and we can help facilitate those conversations, um, you have the ability to co-create something. So working online um, in groups of two or three 
uh, is a good way to kind of find out what people need. And when you're working in groups of three, you, I mean, we do this in real life too, and there's no reason why you can't do it on a on a on a online. Okay, I just gotta well. say, online is real too, Chris. Yes. What do we call it? Meat space? Meat space? I'm not familiar with all the lingo. Oh yeah, um, baby. So, so okay, in in, uh, in, uh, in in bit space versus meat space, let me just call it that. So in bit space, you can do the same thing as we do in meat space, which is that you, um, um, you can have uh, one person interviewing another, um, thinking really about the questions that you're going to use together, and then have another person actually witness and harvest. So, ah. so that way, you're having a listener and you're practicing active listening. And I think that again provides you're watching a co-creation process and you can also be harvesting and oftentimes when I'm working online um, Skype for example is brilliant for this because you can have two people in conversation and the third person is is harvesting in the text box mm -hmm. um, and even for just general group conversations sharing the harvesting is really important so in terms of finding out needs in terms of like actually extracting ideas information or doing a little bit of idea generation together um, I think if you do it if, if you do it that way, it's really good. To, you know, like resist the temptation to like create a wiki and everybody will throw their ideas onto a wiki because the earlier, in some ways for me, like the earlier you can get into helping each other um, come to a creative place and make meaning, um, the, the, the easier it is to then work with ideas, right? And then we don't have to be doing a massive categorization scheme that has nothing to do with whatever it is that we're Beautiful. We're doing. There's lots of thought provocation for us to chew on this week as we look at group size. Thanks, okay. Chris. Okay.